Okay, so here I am. I'm sitting, or I was sitting, with my number one girl, Piper. We have a romance going on. I have two other romances going on, now that I can tell you that, now that she's kind of over there, sitting down again. Uh, I'm romancing Kate, who's over on Spectacle Island, and I'm romancing Kira, who's all the way up in Far Harbor. And if I was so inclined... Do, 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 where is he? He's always around here somewhere. There he is. Isn't he cute when he's sleeping? See, this guy here, were I so inclined, is already at the point where I could make him another romance. Then you got my buddy McCready. Lost track of how many I got. Oh, man. He's just as interested in me for romance as this lady over here, who I am romancing. You might say, gee, you, you really want to bring her right next to Piper? Well, she's shown interest in Piper, too, so that's, you know. In fact, with the exception of Nick and that other synth from the Institute and Strong, who's a super mutant, and they don't exactly, they're not a romantic group, really, you know, unless you count being dunked in a tank of FEV romance, which I personally don't. Um, Deacon, Deacon's just, you know, not into a relationship right now. But with just a few exceptions, all of the potential companions in the game can be potential companions. And this is true whether or not you choose to be the boy in the game or the girl in the game. Whether you're the mother or the father. Whether you're Nate or Nora. It doesn't matter. They're all open to being with you because you are so awesome. And I think that's a really wonderful, very progressive game mechanic and all that. And it, it you know, it, it opens up a lot of possibilities. It lets the player play however he or she wants to play the game. And it's all great. But when you think about it from being in the world... How would that work? I mean, statistically speaking, I mean, that means that everybody in the game that you run into is bisexual. And really only 2% of the population is bisexual in our world. What has happened in this world that has changed that? I think that's a very interesting thing to ponder. I mean, it's not a happy place. Let's be honest. There's, there's look at this. Does anything else look happy to you? This is a world where everybody's kind of waiting to die, kind of a slow and horrible death, scraping out a meager existence. Yeah. Is that is that the sort of thing where, you know, it would encourage people to find whatever comfort they can find in whoever they can find and not perhaps be as tied to the old social norms of the previous world? Of course, that doesn't really take into account the genetic factor that people believe comes into this sort of thing. So why would genes be so dramatically changed here in the future after a nuclear holocaust? Well, you could say radiation did it. Well, would radiation really make everybody bisexual? That seems kind of... And I, not just homosexual, because everybody's open to every kind of relationship in the game, as far as I can tell. You could pull up a multiverse interpretation of everything. Oh, we've got robots. Let's move on to the next thing. Ah, quiet. That's better. So, I was saying, you could say, well, in one universe where the husband survives, uh, it just happens to be a world where the women are straight and you run into homosexual men who are interested in having a relationship with them. But, in the parallel universe where the, the mother survives, then it's the other way around. He, she's just running into uh, lesbians and straight men. But that doesn't seem to jibe with what we really feel should be happening, does it? I mean, it doesn't seem like it's likely. What are the odds of that happening? And again, I'm not making any judgments here. This is just a discussion of how did this come about? How did how did society change because of this cataclysm that now you see these kind of relationships? And particularly the fact that people aren't concerned with monogamy that much, although that you do have a, a wedding between a man and a robot down in Diamond City. I mean, obviously some things are still going on. You can't say June doesn't have a really good marriage going with Marcy. I mean, yes... They're both miserable because of their circumstances, but they're still together, despite some of the most miserable circumstances you could possibly have. So, it still does exist. So, there are so many different ways to take this, and what I thought of 
is that this would be a great challenge for Austin. Some of you immediately know who I'm talking about. For those of you who don't, if you go over to the ShoddyCast YouTube channel, Austin has an incredible series of videos about the science of video games. I should really say the science of video games, many of which have to do with Fallout 4. Oh, excuse me for one second. What's, what, what's that? Oh, he's with the game theorist now. Oh, okay, well, they, this is a game theory. This is, this is just, that's just fine too. And he goes into such amazing depth. I'm an engineer. I love the depth he goes into in breaking down whether the science is real or whether it makes sense. What's up? Does it make sense? More often, it doesn't make sense. And he says it in no uncertain terms. You really have to check it out unless you're really sensitive to, how shall we put it, colorful language. Because his, his euphemisms are just, you know, he, he definitely is one of those people where they say you, if you don't have a good vocabulary, you use perhaps colorful language, as they would say it. He's one of those people where he has an incredible vocabulary, but weaves it all together like a tapestry. It's just amazing to see. But the, the way he breaks everything down, the way he figures everything out, I would love to see Austin try to explain the sexual demographics of the post-apocalyptic world here in Boston. And it, it does seem to be kind of a Bostonian thing, because in all the other fallouts, you don't see this. Now, I realize that on a practical basis is because they've introduced the romance mechanic into Fallout 4 first. But, why would it be in Boston and not in New Vegas? Why would it be in Boston and not in the Commonwealth? Or why was it not noticeable then? Like, why? That's a great way of approaching this. So I want to say this is a, a call out to Austin. Austin, here's a suggestion. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, Figure out what's going on here, dating-wise. How did this work? How did this come about? And, of course, feel free to comment in the description below if you have your own theories about how this came about. Let's restrict this to the theory of how it came about. Let's not do any, go, this is good, this is bad, this is because, you know, let's, let's not get weird, okay? It's a video game. Let's, let's keep it level. And on that note, this is The Black Knight. Have a great night.